quite a few years ago, I coined the phrase the annual whitetail shift. And that's my based on my observations, whether it was big public land, UP of Michigan, Southern Michigan, uh, Southwest Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, whatever it might be, where there's a definite shift of mature bucks from their summer grounds or summer habitat to their fall habitat. And if you think about it, it has to happen. And, uh, and I'll break it down a little bit. Summer habitat right here, fall habitat right up here, summer habitat. If deer are feeding on beans, alfalfa, clover, other summer food sources, they are gone in September, October. Get the last cutting of hay in early September and it doesn't grow back appreciably. Alfalfa also gets uh, frosted out. First frost turns it yellow not very attractive. And then uh, beans, they turn brown in early September and they're not as palatable or attractive to deer. It's great if they're standing in December, but that's typically not the case. Bucks crave open cover during the fall. They have to have open cover. Open cover gets them away from the mosquitoes. It's cooler. It's like turning on the AC air conditioning in those big open hardwoods. Like I said, fewer bucks. It's cool, good airflow. And then finally, Typically that's a spot, it's lazy, it's during the summertime, there's not that hunting pressure. Small game hunters, deer hunters, whatever it might be in the woods. And so they can take, about, take up space just about anywhere as long as they have good airflow. And they have to have that open cover because they can't smash their velvet growing antlers through that thick stem count cover that they prefer during the fall. During the fall, they shift, high stem count, very thick cover. There's times you see a buck jump out of an open hardwoods where you could see two, three hundred yards in any direction, but typically he's in that thickest cover, even on public land, he's looking for that. So high stem count cover, whether it's grasses, weeds, briars, hardwood regeneration, shrubs, he's in that location. Fall food, that summer food that he fed on for several months is completely gone. Completely shift to different food sources. That's why if you have private land, it's such an opportunity for you to have food plots. It's almost a must on your land. Number three, bucks need browse. They need cool season browse. That's hardwood regeneration. You can throw some acorns in there, partially here and there, some briars. They have to, woody shrub tips. They have to have that fall browse during the daylight, during their bedding hours. And a lot of that, they're feeding on green herbaceous growth during the summertime. Green herbaceous growth in the north half of the country is gone during the fall. And so a lot of the burning practices, for example, on public land, they're producing bur uh, green herbaceous growth on the forest floor. Again, all that's gone. It's great down in Georgia maybe Missouri and places, but when you get north, that green herbaceous growth is gone and you can't hold deer based on that. Browse because it's gone, it's not a factor. You have to have our hardwood regeneration, woody shrub tips, briars, acorns. So you have to have the cool season browse that attracts them and then low hunting pressure and low human influence in that area. And so there's a lot of areas that don't have human intrusion or influence during the summertime but very few in the fall, especially when you add a lot of hunting pressure and the fact that most people are over pressuring their land or food plots, whatever it might be. Bucks have a very hard time finding a place to get slotted into. That's why there's such a drastic difference between summer cover right here. This is all summer and fall, winter up here. Big, big difference between the two. And what I find, pretty crazy, but I would say on average, the distance between these two areas is about a mile, maybe a mile and a quarter. So that's why it explains where deer go to. They don't just go nocturnal and sit on a mound back there in your bedding area, 100 yards from a food plot and show up at 2 a.m. It's because they traveled from so far to get there. And what's interesting, you'll have several properties in between. These right here. This is the property or location where hunters have the opportunity, especially on private land, to be the herd influencer and the hunt influencer in the area. Because they have the fall cover, they manage hunting pressure, they put all those factors together that we talk about. They have the best chance of shooting that buck, building the herd, protecting the buck, advancing them to the next age class. And by the way, they're the ones that are actually feeding them and actually giving them some appreciable browse and necessary food before they go into the winter and right at, during the winter, right before, Unlike this person right here, this is where it's critical. This is when deer die. They don't die here because of a lack of summer food. They die because of a lack of winter food. So this person is not only the herd influencer, but they're a health influencer of the herd too. This doesn't really add much. There's food everywhere. So what ends up happening, and these two are a mile apart. It's interesting. These people right here might get lucky. 
There are little spots, it might be a small little land with a chunk of food, good habitat, they manage your hunting pressure, that buck might travel through there. And he'll usually let them know. Each one of these will pick up trail cam photos, each one of these little parcels in between. Letting them know that this buck has focused on their land and he's telling them, you know, I'm, I might be back during the rut, I might be back in December, you know, different times of the year. This person over here that has that summer food source, they have a chance during the rut and that's about it. They don't have the food, they don't have the cover, the summer food sources don't attract fall habitat for bucks. And that's that whitetail shift. Pretty big difference between the two right here. And this is a very important concept for you to understand. This buck that lives here during the summer, lives over here in the fall, winter, is telling this person, I'll be back during the middle of the rut and you can count on it. Now, if this person down here has an area of fall food cover, fall cover off to the side, maybe that's gonna be enough to hold that buck. And that's a good thing. So this person, even if you have open ag all around you and you rent ag land out to farmers or whatever it might be, you might find that if you offer enough cover and food off to the side, you can hold those bucks and hold them a percentage of the time. And that's what features a lot of studies on bucks too. They show a big barbell movement where bucks are spending a lot of time here and a lot of time here. And to me, that goes back directly towards a fall range versus a summer range. And that's what I've seen on, you know, talking to over a thousand clients and really analyzing their deer herd and really trying to figure out what's going on on their property and why, where those bucks are at, where they're coming to, where they think they live during the daylight hours if they're coming in at two or three in the morning. We analyze all those different things and that's what creates the deer hunting shift. It's on an annual basis. It's something I've seen for many, many years. And if you understand this, it helps you understand the complexities of deer hunting and deer habitat management at a much higher level. If you ignore this concept and you just look at it like, ah, deer just move everywhere. They have a three mile home range, they'll be back. Boy, what a missed opportunity for yourself, for the people that hunt on your land. And it's missed under opportunity for even scouting public land because there's a lot of areas that you can scout in January, February, March to show winter deer herd and winter yarding area for deer, bucks, deer in general and that sign those pellets even those late season rubs during the second rut third rut were created and it can be very deceiving you go to a property in march and look at all the deer sign look at all the deer trails look at all the deer beds folks those are winter beds late winter beds they're not where they bed in the summer they're not where they bed in the fall so you really need to learn these concepts of where deer are at during the summer why they're there those big open hardwoods lots of shade maybe adjacent to a clear cut and why they might be in a huge diverse area swamp area with a lot of regeneration back next to some clear cut very remote on public land versus those summer holdings of cool airflow on private lands alfalfa beans those summer food sources and finally that fall area where bucks definitely head to about middle of september end of september into early october and really look for that fall that fall shift to take place in your area. It happens every year. And I think it'll help you if you understand that concept, planning your hunts this fall. And not only planning your hunts, but your property on private land and certainly your scouting missions on public land. Enjoy the shift. It's something I've enjoyed watching and really taking advantage of that strategy every single year. And I hope it's something that you'll take advantage of this season. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, you're obviously interested in white tail habitat solutions, what I have to teach, and you will love my new web class series. The first one is how to design your white tail property. It's out now. The link is in the description. I invite you to check it out. It's on my website. Can't wait to hear about it.